Hello everyone, uh, this is Silk. We are doing Operation From Russia With Love. This is a strategic recap for turn five. Um, kind of because I knew what was going on earlier in the game. I didn't really see a lot of value in doing a, a, any kind of recap for turns one to four. Uh, there just wasn't a whole lot going on and I kind of knew that was the case. But now that we're at the end of turn five, uh, things are, are heating up. So I wanted to go ahead and, and do one and kind of go over a few things and observations. Um, one of the other sort of tidbits here is since I went ahead and selected the Soviets, uh, there were several reasons for that. Uh, one of them was that I think the Soviets are, are the more, most challenging of the, of the three factions to play, certainly from a, a victory standpoint. But it also kind of created a situation where I'm on my own team, unlike all my, my fellow players here, and uh, I have a lot more experience than in B4 than they do. So by me kind of operating on my own, uh, it lets them kind of explore gameplay on their own, and in the meantime, um, I get to kind of make commentary on everything they're doing. So without having to worry about spoiling anything for, for my partner, because I don't have a partner. So uh, that, that's what we're going to do here. Um, looking at the, the income chart here, it's, it's turn five. Uh, Japan's at very nice uh, 20, 25 income, just edged over the, the Germans. Um, you'll see versus what they've, they've collected. The... Um, Germans are more set for, for their parts at their uh, maximum income, and I don't think they're going to go to war this turn, um, but it's possible. I, I, I have declared war with Germany on turn six before. I've seen other people do it, so it's certainly possible, but I anticipate their income is going to stay about the same, which uh, the Soviets are going to get a third die, so there's there's will go up as well. Um, and Japan will certainly grab at least a little bit more, I think, from, from China. So you're going to see their income shift up a bit as well. But in, in the meantime, I wanted to kind of touch base on that. For technology, uh, the Germans have a solid, solid tech program here. Um, I believe they're 10 out of 19 rolls, which is just over 50%. And uh, more importantly... Three of those are, are five of them, actually, are at 8+. So that is a definite uh, positive dice luck advantage, whatever you want to call it, uh, for them. Uh, meanwhile, uh, England at least has, has their core bits here. They, they've got enough successes to kind of kind of make do. Um, no, no reason for them to be too, too upset. And the Japanese have their core tidbits as far as what Panzer J is. He's, he's definitely leaning on a... On a kind of Pacific boat angle, so him having both improved construction and large ships suits him well there too, so I think he's pretty content where he's at, and uh, Italy, having three out of five successes, has to be happy with where they're at, so overall, uh, it's great, great for them. Uh, the U.S., unfortunately, only going one for, for seven is, is a sad day, but there's plenty of turns for them to catch up, and the Soviets, of course, don't have any technology there. We'll hopefully get to roll for it on, on turn six and at least get few things on the board here but overall this is a pretty this is a pretty good situation for, for any of the access to be in i think they're they're perfectly pleased with with where they're at so let's take a look at the board here's germany so uh notice uh, Hambone here has got his his airborne and his primary armor stack set up in Bavaria. Um, I don't think he's going to attack this turn, somewhat because of that. He does have these cavalry here. Those cav can hit Switzerland. They can hit uh, Belgium, and they can absolutely go into West Poland and, and inevitably into Warsaw. So he certainly has options. I think that's why he's doing this, this cav stack here, is to kind of see where things are. But I'm guessing he's going to wait another turn. I think he wants... He's got enough income, I think he wants some more armor before he he does stuff. So I'm guessing we're going to have another turn of peace. But you never know. Germany Germany gets, gets to set things up the way the way they wish. Uh, as for the Atlantic, you've got three German subs here. They're kind of private, certainly go anywhere they want to go. You've got the German subs down here, primed to kind of go wherever they want to go. Um, and you can see the Commonwealth is just kind of spreading out as best they can. Uh, fun part here is uh, Global War Enthusiast is pairing a, a French destroyer with his, his 
British destroyer so that if the subs decide they want to attack them, he'll take the French destroyer as the first casualty to keep his his British destroyer safe. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an interesting idea. I, I, I like it. Um, certainly curious in, in that regard. As for uh, the Japanese and China, we'll, we'll jump over here. Um, certainly the, the, the CCP kind of took it on the chin here. Um, they did not succeed at any of their influence rolls. They had five of them, which is more than I would normally anticipate, and they failed every one, and then lost both of the coin flip rolls here in Sinkai and Sinkai, um, which probably is not how Japan wanted that to go. I think they would have preferred uh, two smaller factions than one almost non-existent faction and a very large KMT. Uh, this is, you kind of already saw with the, the Lend Lease coming in, and I suspect you're going to get more Lend Lease from the Allies here. Uh, the KMT are going to be a real, real bear to, to deal with. Um, and the CCP are mostly just non-existent. We'll, we'll see if Japan decides they want to kill them or not. It kind of depends on what, how he wants to spend his resources, but I expect he'll take he'll take Hunan and Guangdong this, this turn, and he may choose to take Shenzhen. We'll, we'll see what he does. Um, more interesting part, though, is down here. Panzer J's got four heavy cruisers at stage two, um, which to me kind of leans that he's he's planning on pretty heavily going into some sort of uh, Pacific War, either with the British or the Americans or both. Um, he, he's definitely wanting a very nasty, powerful uh, surface fleet that's going to let him do stuff. And then as a counter to that, we can kind of get to the Commonwealth and how, how they're arranging their, themselves. London is basically undefended. Not, not a surprise. Uh, they'll, they'll take if if Germany wants to take London, uh, the Brits will take that because they want the plus 25 for America. So that's why that's looking that way. Uh, if you notice, they instead have more than enough to protect southern England because um, this is the territory that doesn't get plus 25 to the United States. So they're very much making sure they kind of hold their, their own there. Um, French fleet's kind of sitting, as I would anticipate. I'm a little surprised the French subs are here. Um interesting choice it's not not where i would put the french subs but i'm curious what what uh cool war enthusiast is is doing there with with those i guess i guess it if they go french he's gonna bring them back uh yes i'm not a bit surprised there um while we're here i guess let's talk about the italians so the italians because of the way things went down in spain uh did not have to spend any money for spain which has given them kind of free reign to do to do what they wanted um I don't really know what they're up to. Um, they've got the two transports awfully early, relatively speaking. Um, like he's not going to have the money to really to really fuel these two. Um, he sort of has enough power that if he wants to go into Yugoslavia, he certainly can uh, with these guys here. But he's not going to be able to do that and make a, a, a naval attack. So I'm just a little confused. Um, and I have no idea why these three coastal subs are here either. Uh, which, check that, maybe these three coastal subs aren't actually in M3. Um, but generally speaking, you want these three coastals here. Um, anywhere that you want to fight is Italy. It's, it's either you're either fighting here in M8, you're fighting here in M2, um, or I guess in some cases you might be fighting in M4, but generally it's M8 or M2, and this is because the coastal subs only have the one movement. Um, this is the only territory they can, they can attack from. So maybe he's got something else going on, um, but it, it's not it's not duck seeing those three guys there. Um, these guys being non Sardinia certainly gives him gives him some options uh, attack wise. Um, although I think I like launching from Tobruk better. Um, just kind of a, as a tidbit, I, I really like building an airbase in Tobruk for for Italy. But we'll, we'll see what board game Grove got in mind. I'm certainly got he's got a Got a plan of some sort in, in the works here. Um, Commonwealth has in some way, I think, to ward off that. Uh, they've got a, a AAA there sitting in, in, in Egypt there to try to keep things uh, centered, plus the ghost militia. You know, they've got four ghost militia here from these battle cruiser and three heavy cruisers, so they're making sure they hold Egypt kind of no matter what uh, Italy does. So that's that sort of that tidbit. So I don't anticipate really anything from the Italians just, just yet. We'll, we'll see. Where it goes there. Um, Soviets, if I, if I roll well enough, I'll, I'll get to start my campaign against uh, Finland. No real real shock there. Um, and other than that, really not a whole lot for them to do. Uh, they just kind of... Uh,
really the only uh, different element that kind of I got because of how Spain went is that I was able to upgrade uh, my factory to Wasbirsk so that I have uh, an extra tech die. So that was sort of what the Soviets got out of the Spanish agreement. Uh, that should be it, though. I don't know that there's... Oh, I didn't touch on Calcutta. So look at Calcutta. Five, ten, two, two from the Anzac, uh, a motorized and another infantry, and an and a artillery. So he's looking at 14 units sitting in Calcutta, not counting the two A's that he got there as well. Um, a little more than two Jesus, definitely deciding he's absolutely positively not going to lose Calcutta, even to a Japanese uh, surprise strike. The cost of that, though, is, is that Malaya only has one militia in it. Sydney has a single infantry. These guys are leaving. I'm just going to put them on this transport and shuffle them either to Malaya or Calcutta. Um, so he's, he's definitely weak here. And he's weak here, but he's, he's absolutely putting all his eggs in the Calcutta basket and, and kind of just j daring Japan uh, to fight him, which that'll be a nasty, nasty, nasty fight here in, in Burma, um, in the jungles, which is where the FEC wants to, or FEC wants to fight because it has Gurkhas. So that, that's kind of a, a choice he's created. Um, and meanwhile, Japan, as we've kind of seen, is going going somewhat Pacific with all those, those cruisers. So you may... This, this may not be much of a conflict zone. It'll be interesting to see. Uh, he may decide to slide down and grab the DEI instead, um, although he has not built his carrier for that, which is a bit of a surprise to me. Um, but maybe he's not doing DEI. Maybe they're going to they're gonna kind of do a slow roll of the U.S. income. Uh, the, the turn five declaration of attack would certainly kind of lean that way. And maybe he's just mostly wanting to kill the KMT. So the, this may be a situation where we see Japan fighting the KMT for the next three or four turns. Um, and just hoping for low, low U.S. income rolls, and getting them, getting them off the board. So I just want to kind of make that little little comment there. We'll see what happens with uh, turn six, and uh, that should be it. I'll see y'all a bit later when we do uh, turn six for the Soviets. Everybody have a great day.